Welcome to the service of Christian worship. The Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church congregation, our session, and myself, Reverend John Van Nuys, we want to welcome you to this worship service. I imagine on the other side of the screen there are familiar faces and also some new faces. Please know that you are welcome to commune with us in the spirit to worship God. Let us join now in our call to worship, which comes... From Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. 
come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. God has made us, and we are his. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and enter God's courts with praise. Give thanks to the Lord and bless God's name. For the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever and God's faithfulness to all generations. Our opening hymn is Come Thou Almighty King. It is sung by Jenny Fight Swick. Let us now confess our sin before God and our neighbor. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Holy God, you made us in your image, but we demean ourselves. You created us to reflect your goodness and love, but we devalue others, causing them to suffer, and we despoil your world, threatening everything that lives. Saving God, have mercy and forgive us. Help us to change. By your spirit, fill us with your truth and love so we may live for you as new creations in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now continue to confess our sins in silence. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Jesus Christ. And Christ did not come to condemn us, but to save us. Christ was born for us, and he lived for us. Christ died and was raised for us. Christ now lives for us and reigns for us and prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. Our old lives have already passed away and our new life in Christ has come. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us join together in our prayer for illumination. Gracious God, grant us your light that we may see, your heart that we may love, your spirit that we may grow, your word 
that we may become wholly thine. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 8 through the first half of verse 11. Listen now for God's word as it speaks to you. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and then we will be satisfied. Jesus said to Philip, Have I been with you all this time, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do you believe in God? The vast majority of Americans do. If so, what kind of God do you believe in? A recent university study found that Americans believe in not one, but four distinctly different gods. An authoritarian God, a benevolent God, a critical God, and a distant God. Some believe in an authoritarian God who is angry at humanity's sins and engaged in every creature's life and in world affairs. The authoritarian God is ready to throw the lightning bolt of judgment down upon the unfaithful and the ungodly. Some believe in a benevolent God who, yes, is grieved by sin, but is ultimately motivated by love to forgive prodigal souls and welcome them back home. Some believe in a critical God who cares about human affairs but does not intervene. Those who believe in a critical God live out their faith by conforming to the moral principles of God not by participating in an interactive relationship with God. Some believe in a distant God, who is not a being but an impersonal cosmic force that gave rise to the world, but is not involved with it or with us. Which brings us to you. Do you believe in God? If so, which God do you believe in? Is your understanding of your heavenly Father primarily informed by the way you were treated or mistreated by your earthly Father or by your other primary relationships? Did you grow up in a hellfire and brimstone church or no church at all? Our life experience conditions how we understand God. If only we could know for sure. If only we could see for ourselves. That's what Philip is asking Jesus. Show us the Father, Jesus, and then we'll be satisfied. To which Jesus replies, I already have. If you want to see the Father, says Jesus, you're looking at him. The Father is here in my words, in my works, and in my presence. Stop searching. Start living. This is the heavenly moment. This is the capital R revelation. You have everything you need to know God right here in me. If that is true, if Jesus is God's fullest revelation, then that is definitely good news. The Catholic spiritual writer Richard Rohr says, if God is Trinity and if Jesus is the face of God, then God is benevolent. 
If the word became flesh at Bethlehem, if the incarnation is true, then we do not have an impersonal, distant God. We have Emmanuel, the name for Jesus. And Emmanuel means God with us. We have God with us in all that we encounter, in all of our living and in all of our dying. God in Christ is right here with us and for us. And if that's so, we don't have an authoritarian, angry, lightning bolt throwing God like Zeus. We have a benevolent God who yearns to bless, forgive, and love us all. If Jesus is the fullest revelation of who God is, and if the cross is the fullest revelation of who Jesus is, then we have a God for whom love and forgiveness is the final word. Jesus' final word on the cross was, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. If the final word of Jesus' life was forgiveness, then the final word for our life is forgiveness. We are forgiven because God so loved the world, because God so loves you. The cross isn't an ancient transaction. The cross is an ever-present transformation. You can live right now. In the cross, the holy poured out forgiving love for you to live today. The fallen ways of anger, vengeance, and cruelty, and the dark powers of evil, injustice, and death were defeated by Christ once and for all and for you. By grace in Christ, you are forever free from those enslaving dead-end ways in order to be a new creation. Fully alive in love, fully in love with God and neighbor and creation. That is the calling for which you were created and in which your happiest, best life can be lived. All of this is so because Jesus Christ is risen today. Easter means that these truths are open to you because our Savior lives for you. God is love. The world is good. And you are a new creation. Yes, you will have hardships, but you will never face them alone counterweight all anxiety and any despair by that glad reality in which you are forgiven, freed, and found right now. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, we praise you and thank you for your saving love for us, for your grace which adopts us and makes us one with Christ into your family. We pray, Lord, that you will help us to understand properly who you are and who we are in you. Help us to remember that we belong to you and that our fullest, best, and most blessed life can be found in following Jesus' way of self-giving, selfless love. Help us to follow Christ in that way and to discover the life that is there waiting for us. We pray, Lord, that you will pour out your spirit and that you will send us to your hurting world. Lord, where there is hurt, help us to offer your healing where there is abandonment, help us to offer welcome. And where there is anger, help us to work for peace. 
We pray, Lord, for all who are ill. We ask you to pour out your richest blessings upon them. For all who grieve, O God, we ask for you to walk with them through their difficult days of mourning and that you will transform their pain with your peace. We pray, O God, for our nation. We ask your grace upon our leaders for them to have the wisdom and courage to work together to advance the common good. We pray, Lord, that you will help us replace our discord and strife and enmity with a willingness to listen to one another, to work for peace, and to advance justice for all. We ask, O Lord, your grace upon our enemies, upon all who are forgotten, discarded, for those for whom there, no one is praying for them. We ask, Lord, your grace to abound in those situations and hearts and in these persons and concerns which we now name silently before you. O oh God, we thank you for receiving our prayers and for receiving us as your forgiven, redeemed, and loved children. Unite us now in one voice in the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is I Have I've Got Peace Like a River. It's sung by Jenny Fight Swick. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. Receive now the charge and the benediction. I charge you to remember who you are and whose you are. Go forth into God's wider world, trusting in God's benevolent grace and God's ever-present love, and share that grace and love with all, trusting that as you do, you are participating in the Easter moment with our Savior, that in Him you are a new creation, and with him and with us all, God's kingdom shall come. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn a shining face toward you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift you up and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.